For this video, I'm going to show how to draw two types of arches. So the first arch will be a four centered arch and the second arch will be a three centered arch. Okay, so for the position of the arch, the first arch, the four centered arch, you are moving down from the top of the sheet 120 millimeters to the XY line. Now that XY line will also be the same XY line for the second arch, the tree centered arch. Okay, so you're moving in from the left hand side of the sheet 50 millimeters and you are drawing a length for the base of the arch here, you're drawing 120 millimeters. 120 millimeters. The rise for the arch will be 50 millimeters. 50 millimeters. So a base of 120, a rise of 50. You're moving away from that arch, that baseline, 80 millimeters, and you're going to draw another 120 millimeter line. And you're going to give this a rise of 45 millimeters. 45 millimeters for the second one. So we're going to have a four centered arch here and a three centered arch here. So the first thing we do is for the first uh, four centered arch uh, drawing, what we're going to do is we're simply going to complete a rectangle here. Okay, from the top of the rise to the left hand side of the span. Okay, so I'm putting using a grey pen here just to draw a construction line in. So if I want I can also bring it over this side here. These are only construction lines, light construction lines. Okay, even though I am inking these in, they're only meant to be very light construction lines. But nonetheless, you have to show your construction lines in an exam to show that you have correctly um, carried out the method. Okay, so we have the rectangle here. So we've got the rise and the span of the four centered arch. Now what we have to do is we have to measure up okay, the height of the rise and the next step is to divide it into a two-third measurement. So two-thirds, one-third measurement with regards to the rise. Now with a 50 millimeter measurement it doesn't, uh, it doesn't divide very well when you simply divide it by three because there's an uneven number. So the way I get around this I simply do a division of the lines method. So, what I do is I simply draw a line at an angle here, okay, and I then simply just establish a radius, any radius within reason, okay, and I'm going to strike that off three times, okay. Now, what I do is where I just put these in red here, these, these points I've established with the arc here here and here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the top position back to the top of the rectangle there, the top of the rise. Now keeping it at that angle, I simply use another set square and I slide that set square down until it hits the other point at that same angle and I bring it down. Now all, already I have my two-thirds point, right? But just to indicate how the division of lines works, I bring it down to the other point here. And I have this line, this rise line, now perfectly divided into three equal parts. Now I'm only looking for the two-thirds measurement, which is this measurement here. Okay, so I'm just going to put a red line here, point, point I should say. Now I'm going to then take this two-thirds measurement and I'm going to swing that around. 
okay, as a radius. Swing it around as a radius. Now, before I go further, I'm going to just indicate that arc with a, a green pen. I'm using a French curve. I have this arc put in place here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a point across from this two-thirds rise line. I'm going to bring it across to the top of the rise. Okay, so this line here. Now, the next thing I have to do is I have to draw a line at 90 degrees to that line here, from the two-thirds rise line here, okay, to the top point of the rise. I'm going to draw a line at 90 degrees from the top of the rise. Okay, so I can simply do this with a set square again. Just put that set square parallel to that line and run the other set square to the point. And then I simply draw a line at 90 degrees to that point. Okay, so I have established this line here. Now I'm gonna put that in gray. Okay. Now, the next part of this is simply to connect, okay, to, to get the distance again, just by way of the two-thirds line, the two-thirds measurement here. So that two-thirds measurement, okay, of the rise, I'm simply going to then mark it from that top point here, okay, down. Okay, that two-thirds measurement. So that's the two-thirds measurement at rise, the same measurement marked down here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that point now back to this point here. Now, that's the two-thirds rise measurement on the horizontal. That's the two-thirds rise measurement here on the right, on the left-hand side. And this is the two-thirds rise measurement down here. Okay, so I'm just going to indicate that by two-thirds or. Okay, so this is, this distance is two-thirds or. So that's rise. Okay. This distance here is two thirds again rise. Okay. So we've got two thirds here rise, two thirds here down rise, and this distance here again is the two third rise measurement from here to here. Okay. Now what we simply do is we bisect from this line here now that we've established, we bisect this line. Okay, so bisecting the line, simply extend the compass beyond the halfway point and I swing an arc. So swing an arc here, here, other side of the line then, here and here. Now I mark those points in here, here and here. Now I'm going to just again indicate those arcs with a green pen and using a French curve. Now where that bisection line goes through this line here and intersects with this line here, which I've taken at 90 degrees from this point, from the point here, the top of the rise to the two thirds line here. Okay, that's at 90 degrees to that line. So where that bisection line intersects with that line, that gives me this point here. I connect this point here now 
back through this two-thirds rise on the horizontal point. Okay. Now, I'm going to replicate this point here again on this side by very simply just again bringing this point across to the two-thirds rise line point here and bringing a line at 90 degrees again from that point okay Okay, so that's the line I've established here, and this is at 90 degrees to this line here. Okay, now I'm simply going to bring this point across with a T-square. Now that gives me my next point. So I have a point here, point here, a point here, and I have the same point, the two-thirds point, here. So I simply establish that point again by swinging around my rise line here. That's my two-thirds rise. Establish here, bring that around. And then I simply bring that point through here. So I have one point here, point one. Okay, point two, point three, and point four. Now, to show how that now works, simply from point four here, right, start point one, small one first, so point one, now, that is the two-third line from there. I bring that up, bring that around, and see this line here that I brought through here? That's where the arc ends there. Likewise here, this point here, swing it around to where this line here extends, and that's where the arc ends there. Now, point at the other points then, points three, Extend the compass out. All the way to this point here. And I simply bring that up. Likewise, the other side, that point line there, up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that in as a, a, a hard line. So I'm going to use uh, black ink to just show the completion of the, the arc there, just to follow the lines, and I'm going to use a French coat to do that. Okay, so that is the four centered arch in place and you have the different points from which you uh, basically uh, spring your 
parts of the arch and you have also the joint lines between the points, the, between those curves. Okay, so uh, this is also known as a Tudor arch. It's also referred to as a Tudor arch also. So the next arch will be a tree-centered arch. So this was a four-centered arch. The next arch is going to be a tree-centered arch. So again, how we uh, draw this is very simply, again, we, we, we complete this, complete this uh, rectangle here. So we've got the span and we've got the rise. Okay, so if I draw just simply again the rectangle outline. Okay, so the rectangle drawn in, this is the rise, this is the span. Now, what we do is we get the rise measurement, okay, and we pull it around from that point there, we pull it around onto the top of that rectangle there the rise line point, okay, this this line here, okay? We could also do the same on this side here. If we wanted to do it on this side, it doesn't matter. Same thing, right? Simply bring, bring it up on this side. But you only have to do one side and then just bring the points over to the other side. Okay, so I've established this around here. And then simply what I'm going to do is from the top of the rise then, okay, from the top of the rise, I am going to bring this point here, where that rise arc hits the top of the rectangle there, I'm simply going to bring that around. Now, what I have here is a diagonal. So this diagonal here, which is an important part of it, that diagonal measurement, okay, I brought my rise around okay up to this top point here and then using this as a springing point i brought this around onto the diagonal here now this distance from here to here i'm going to bisect as a line now before i do that i'm just going to indicate these arcs uh, in uh, green okay so now what i have now is this distance so from this point here to the corner point here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bisect that as a line. So, set my compass out beyond halfway, swing an arc one side and then the other. Then likewise do the other side. Swing an arc each side. One and two. Okay. Again, I'm just going to indicate those arcs in a green line. Okay, so just the two points there and there. And I'm just going to indicate those arcs. Okay, so I'm going to draw that bisection line in now. And I'm going to draw the vertical here.
what that gives me it gives me one point here one point here now just to replicate it on this side here all that I simply need to do is get that point there and bring it around now I'm just going to draw that in again as a green line uh, using a French curve here and I'm just going to draw this line through that point now that's going to give me obviously the intersection line between the two arcs so again using my compass I have my first point here and I swing an arc I do the same on this side here I swing an arc and then for this last point here, that point there, I extend it out to this point here, which will be the same as that point, and I swing an arc around. Now, I'm going to again draw that in uh, using a, bla a black uh, marker, um, so I'm going to use a French curve as well. Okay, so now we have the three centered arch, and I'm just going to index those points again. So, points one, two, and point three. Okay, so this here is a four centered. Arch. and this here over this side is a three centered arch So I hope you found that useful, thank you very much.